Are you getting into the same argument with your partner and it just seems to go nowhere? Well, I'd like to introduce you to an exercise from the Gottman Institute called the Dreams Within Conflict Exercise to help you to uncover maybe what's really going on underneath all of those same old, same old arguments. I'm Stephanie Cook and I'm a licensed clinical social worker and the director of Couples Counseling ATL here in Atlanta, Georgia, serving couples all over Georgia. And the About Dreams Within Conflict exercise is gold. Every couple should be using it, especially on those topics that really seem to go nowhere, that you seem to keep fighting about all the time. It helps you discuss perpetual problems calmly and more constructively. And even the big ones that are gridlocked, it uses dreams or, you know, kind of ideal things that you want, uh, beliefs, values, and stories that may have been deep underground underneath your position or the problem. And it gives uh, the key to honestly more empathy from your partner, from you towards your partner, to be able to see each other's positions on different issues more deeply. We've also seen in uh, the Gottman research that when couples use this exercise and then they work on trying to come to some sort of compromise later, they're able to have some more resolution and in a more compassionate, soothing way where they walk away feeling better about their relationship. So you won't be discussing compromise and problems just yet, that comes later. First understanding must precede resolution. That's the motto at the Gottman Institute. And one of you will start off as the speaker, the other person starts off as the listener, and when the speaker is finished, you swap roles so that each of you have a chance to be the speaker and the listener. And as the speaker, you'll ask several questions, one at a time, um, and as the listener, you just talk and let yourself reflect um, deeply on your answers and talk about maybe why I do feel the way I do or why I do believe what's my background here. Your personal history really has an impact on you today. The past is not past, but talking about the past does help our partner to understand us better. So keep in mind that, you know, don't start to argue or try to persuade your partner that your point of view is right. Any sort of right or wrong, their way is wrong is not going to help. So think of this, just describe yourself all parts of you that relate to the position. And I'll give you a list um, from the Gottman Institute called Sample Dreams, and that's for the person listening or the dream catcher as a way of helping you to create some ideas on your own if you're getting stuck. So these questions um, help you dig uh, deep into your position and ultimately to help you, you know, to create some meaning and figure out who you truly are. Um, you may not come up with an answer immediately, so you may need to sit on it or journal or take a walk and think about it, and that's okay. It can take a few minutes or maybe a couple days. This is a conversation that you could, probably will have to continue for a while. And sometimes an answer may come up with like images or metaphors and isn't really words at all. There may be times when you think, you know, I don't know a word for this feeling, but I felt like all the trains had passed and I'm just sitting here standing on the train station. You know, that might be how you feel. In the research, we found over and over again that there's always hidden emotions and feelings and experience that couples aren't necessarily aware of. With deeper understanding and conversation through these sorts of dreams within conflict conversations that deepen your understanding of each other, you just have to trust the process that things will unfold and you will uncover sort of who each of your authentic selves are. And if you're really attuned as a listener, your job is to help your partner to really open up and to talk and to feel safe enough to share, especially these vulnerable dreams and needs with you, um, maybe some that they've never even admitted to or been aware of in themselves. So to do that, it's really important that you don't interrupt, okay? You wanna bring out your point of view only after they've fully felt heard. And just give your partner, you know, the, the time, the patience, the silence that they need sometimes for the for their own feelings and thoughts to come to them. And, you know, it's kind of like being a best friend and just sitting and just listening to somebody talk. You're not thinking about your response or your answer. You're not going into your own history. It's not a two-way conversation. It's really just listening. And you don't want to argue or bring up your own point of view or make comments or judgments about their feelings as they're talking. You're just going to go from question to question and you know, nod, give them your eye contact, make sure that they know that you're with them, you can take notes if that helps, and try to really remember your partner's answers because this is something that they're being vulnerable and opening up about. You may want to summarize what you've heard your partner say after they've answered all the questions. Um, that also just makes them feel more loved, like you're following them and you really care. 
And when you've completed this exercise, you've taken a really important step forward in loosening up whatever conflict you, know, you began with. It, it starts a respectful dialogue, an understanding, a deeper connection that honestly only conflict can really bring up. It could look like this. Um, maybe you bring up something about a reunion. Well, it looks like you were really having a bad time last night at our college reunion. No, that was fine. Well, you didn't look like you were having fun. You were on your phone the whole time. Ugh, not this again. I'm tired of you criticizing me for being an introvert. Listen, get over it. I don't like all the superficial chit chat and I never have. So can you just lay off? Well, why do you always have to be a turtle and draw in words? Can't you just get to know people and engage instead of just being me, me, me all the time? Can't you have a good time? Listen, listen, I was able to entertain myself. I did have a good time on my phone. Thank you very much. And a lot of those people I don't even care about anymore. I don't want to talk to. They're from college 20 years ago. Well, you left me all alone at this reunion and you know how I feel about these things. I was, you, were, you weren't even by my side any, at any time throughout the night. No, this is about you not being able to stand my personality. Well, it needs a little bit of tweaking for sure. No, it doesn't. Get over it, babe. You were on your phone the whole freaking time. You left me by myself. Nobody cares if I was on my phone. Well, I do, you should care. You're on your phone all the time. We only see these people every now and then. These are people that used to be really big in our lives and I hate it. No, you're wrong. That's it, no more discussion. I'm an introvert, leave me alone. Mm, probably didn't go the best, right? So that's maybe how not to do this exercise. <laughs> um, with a typical situation like this, you may wanna say, listen, can we talk about the reunion last night? Okay, sure. Well, I wanna talk about how lonely I felt especially at events like this, like you know, like reunions like this. Uh, can we talk about it? Yeah, let's do those questions. Okay, the dreams within conflict exercise? Okay, okay. So let's talk about the problem first, okay? Okay, well, the problem for me is that when we go to these events, I walk away feeling like really anxious. You know, go into them anxious, walk away anxious. I hate it. I want to go and I want to have a good time, but it's hard because I feel weird and lonely and all by myself. And I really need something different at those things. Well, yeah, I'd like to solve this problem. We've had it forever. Okay, well, let's try it. Okay, so first question. Do you have any core beliefs, ethics or values that are part of this position or on this issue? Well, yes, okay. Um, well, we've been together for 10 years, 20 years, I guess if you count. I, I, I believe in independence, uh, being able to be myself. I believe in being able to each do our own thing and come back to each other. So I guess that's about it. Okay, so is there a story behind this for you or does this relate to your background or your childhood history in some way? Yeah, well, you know I'm an introvert and when I was little, like I felt like my parents, you know, just kind of let me be and, but they would sometimes demand that I be this extrovert that I didn't want to be, especially at parties. And so I really hate that. And I, I really just try to be myself all the time. And I don't like being superficial. Like I feel like they constantly made me feel that way. Oh, okay. So you can see you start to kind of deepen understanding as you go through these questions. And then eventually you go through all the questions and then maybe you switch and the other partner says, okay, help me to understand. What is the problem as you see it? Well, um, I, you know, I used to be left alone a lot and, um, you know, it wasn't, it didn't feel good. I really wanted somebody by my side. I used to go to these parties and my mom would just leave me there. And, and then if I'd ask her, you know, if I'm feeling like I want to go, she would just say, gosh, you know, only boring people get bored, you know? And so then she'd get mad at me for bothering her and, implying that I should be more interesting. And if I were more interesting, I'd be having more fun. So I guess when I go to these things, I wanna be interesting. I don't like being alone. And I guess also, you know, I'm the first college graduate in my family. And so going to a big reunion like this, I felt like it should be a celebration. And I'm proud of you too. And I'm, I'm proud of what we have. And I, I want you to feel proud of me. And I want people to see that you're with me. And I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. And then maybe they get to the next questions, right? Ideal, like what's your ideal here? And I might say, oh, well, maybe if you just stayed with me until I felt less anxious, and maybe I think if, if I saw that you were really proud of me, 
then I might not feel so bad if you have to go do your introvert thing. So again, no problem solving yet, but they're talking about the ideal, they're talking about their history, they're going through all the questions, what's the problem as you see it. Um, so for each of them, they might define the problem differently, they certainly have different histories, they certainly have different dreams here, and what would be ideal? But as you start to deepen your understanding of each other, you're much more likely to start having some empathy, right? You might think of your partner as when they were little, like when they were left alone at a party, and so parties naturally are probably always gonna make them feel a little anxious now. Or you might feel more empathy for your introverted partner who, you know, wasn't really accepted as an introvert as a child and was forced to kind of be this extrovert that they weren't all the time. And so the act of suppressing who they are really is off-putting to them. So you might start to develop more empathy and understand that this whole uh, fight that they keep having about, you know, reunions or parties really isn't about the reunions or parties. It's really about their own sensitivities, their own history, and their feelings that come up every time they're in these situations. And if you do this dreams within conflict exercise with all of these questions, you start to see the deeper purpose, the deeper goals, the deeper needs, and how you're probably never gonna change. Neither person's never really going to change how they feel, but with more understanding and more empathy for each other, you're both probably going to be more sensitive to those enduring vulnerabilities and sensitivities that are just never gonna go away. Um, a couple like this that I you know, kind of role played for you might get to a point where the compromise is that for at least the first 10 or 20 minutes at these sort of events that they both make a pact that they will stay together you know, maybe the introverted partner won't be this big extrovert, but they'll hold their partner's hand and they might say um, something that they're proud of about their partner in front of people. Um, and then the other partner might give them their blessing to go play on their phone or detach from the social world and have a little bit of introverted recharging uh, for themselves without judgment and with more acceptance. I've seen couples in couples therapy use this uh, this uh, sort of dreams within conflict exercise time and time again to really gain more understanding, more empathy for each other, and to walk away feeling less frustration, less confusion, and, and really to be primed for more of a compromised conversation about how they can both feel respected around their differences and their needs on this particular problem issue. If you want to use dreams within conflict, um, it's available here you can go through the questions with your partner just make sure that you both agree on what problem you're going to address and that you only do one at a time and then you take time you know 10 20 minutes per person to really just listen take notes repeat back make sure they feel validated and understood ask any clarifying questions and then hopefully both of you walk away feeling much better much more primed for a sort of compromise and if you're trading roles and both of you are feeling heard, then there's a sense of equality and a sense of both people being valued and cared about and that neither person owns the truth or reality, that they both have their different feelings and experiences and they're both valid. Uh, if you need help with this though, if there's some topic that just really brings up too much emotion and is too overwhelming for either one of you, come to Couples Therapy. You can reach out to us at counselingatl.com and book a free video consultation for 20 minutes. We serve couples from all over Georgia. We also have couples fly in from all over the world to do intensives with us. If you'd like to learn more, you can go to counselingatl.com. You can also email us with any questions. And if you're interested in these videos, you can just subscribe and watch the future videos. Thanks.